super excited for this race here. We're going to see how it all plays out. A lot of big hitters have showed up on the day, men and women ready to take on the GCN racers and the Alpha Zwift. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the course. Alp de Zwift, it is monstrous, that is for sure. The times, last time I think we had somewhere around a 38 minutes or so, right around 37 or 38 minutes or so, last time it was taken on when we had a broadcast of it uh, here on Zwift. We're going to see how it goes down now. Let's have a quick little chat with Emma and Mai uh, and see how they're warming up and how they've been preparing for the race today. First, let's go on over to Mai, actually. Mai, I hear this might be your first time time out on Zwift if that's if I'm not incorrect uh you're looking forward yeah, to the race today time. yeah yeah it's my first time I just realized I was racing this afternoon because I am replacing Oscar that wasn't feeling good so I'm really excited I've heard incredible things about Zwift so yeah I'm really excited to start well, from, from the get-go, it's definitely going to be pretty fast. You've jumped into the B category. Make sure to ramp up that trainer when you first get going. But uh, you are from a mountain bike background, um, doing a lot of the epic races, stage races, so a lot of endurance. But you're also used to some climbing, so I think you do pretty well there. Uh, my good luck out there on the course. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, and then Emma Pooley uh, coming out of the UK. You know, I think a lot of the uh, Zwifters out here be familiar with your name, multi-time national champion, world champion. Uh, excited to see how the race a race goes. Uh, how are you feeling today, Emma? Um, yeah, I'm slightly concerned that I might end up in the B race, but you know, <laughs> as long as I'm not totally on my own, I don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll I think it'll go real well for you. Uh, we were chatting a little bit before the uh, you know the broadcast here about how to deal with the draft and things like that. I think you know just as long as hanging on right from the get go and uh, going with the kicks, uh, I think that you've got the endurance. I mean, you've done the Alpe d'Huez in real life multiple times, if I'm not incorrect. Yep, I've done it uh, racing uh, in like a sportif in the oat route, and also um, I've actually done it in the uh, Alpe d'Huez triathlon. Which is a bit different, obviously, but I, I have to say I've only raced once on Swift and I got dropped, so uh, it wasn't a great start. <laughs> we'll see how it goes today. <laughs> yeah, it is a fast and furious start, more like a cyclocross race. We were chatting a little bit before and you said that you've actually ran up the Alpe d'Huez before. Is that right? Yep, there's a running race up too, and uh, last year I ran it in training as well. Just uh, I was training last year for duathlon, which is running and cycling. So, yeah, it's uh, it, actually running. It feels quite flat. It's funny. Right on. Well, we do have uh, the social media uh, open for questions and comments. We will be looking at them as we go through. Now, the questions and comments will not be happening during the race very much, though. Obviously, uh, Emma and May are going to be giving their all to be getting to the top of this uh, climb as fast as they possibly can amongst all of the racers. But, Emma, one more thing I wanted to chat a little bit about. I mean, you've been having a, a, a serious time trial focus, I believe. Um, it would look like, actually, with you know, the uh, triathlon focus, obviously a world champion in the time trial in the past in 2010. I think this, you know, you were worried about the racing, but the climb like this, it's kind of a time trial. There's not a whole lot of tactics in the drafting once you do hit it. So it's going to be more about up front, hanging on. And then I would believe the tactic would just be what kind of power you can throw down all the way to the top from the bottom to the top. Yeah. And I, yeah, in the, in the good old days, that would have been my, my forte. I'm not, I'm not, don't train as much as I used to. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely find it easier to put out sort of steady power for a while than to go with attacks and sprints and things. Cause I, I was never a sprinter and that's, that's not got any better since retiring. <laughs> Yeah, no more. I'm not going to be much sprinting out there today. I don't believe not much sprinting on. Maybe just from the get-go. So, um, and my first time out on Zwift, no experience experience with the drafting in Zwift or anything. What's the racing like been like for you this year? And are you kind of confident with your fitness coming in uh, to the race here, May? Oh, oh no, I'm really just uh, stopping. I start. Um, I've just finished the last race three weeks ago, so I'm I'm in my resting period. 
She's so super fit. I'll start my season next Monday. So yeah, uh, fitness not that good, but it's a good point to start. Suffering, good suffering. Yeah. Yeah, get a little bit of a kick in there into the uh, into the intensity. Most likely, it sounds like this is going to be <laughs> happening. But it sounds like you did a lot of stage races those year. I mean, there should be some good endurance in there. And obviously, it's going to be like a one one hour, one and a half hour, you know, effort total here. But uh, what the you know the stage races? You talked about some pretty serious stage races that you uh, you did this year, though. You want to let the viewers know a little bit about what you're doing on the mountain bike this year? Oh, yeah, I love stage racing because I think uh, every day that goes fast, I go stronger. So I, I recover really quickly. So the longer they are, the better for me. So I've been doing uh, Cape Epic. I've done four times. And this year I've raced La Leyenda El Dorado in Colombia. That was an uh, incredible race. Really hard, but really beautiful. I did the Brazil ride as well. I did the Titan Epic, Titan Desert. Uh, I did the Lanzarote Mountain Bike Challenge. Yeah, I've been... Uh, cycling a lot so yeah it's pretty pretty fun awesome awesome and just joining gcn in the last month so good to see you uh with the crew there uh for sure emma what about you any highlights this year uh as far as uh you know any racing highlights at all this year have you been racing much this year or is it just not nah, just gcn uh, commentating and stuff no i am um, i joined gcn in february and i haven't haven't raced my bike at all um uh, apart from the taiwan kom about a month ago and um obviously like a bit of riding but not not racing at all which has been a big change for me um i do i've done quite a few running races so i'm trying to get back into running so that that's going to be my excuse uh is that <laughs> my i went i've been running loads the last few weeks my legs are definitely i now i now ride my bike like a runner and unfortunately i still run like a cyclist so it's uh it's a kind of lose-lose situation for a while but until i adapt but uh, once yeah. a racer always a racer yeah so. oh yeah oh, the will is there it's just the legs might not follow <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely heard that during our intros when we were first, you know, getting acquainted. I could hear it in Emma right away. Like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to hang on. What's going to yeah, happen here? I, What's well, happening? I, I'm going to get thought, dropped right away. It was all this stuff coming out. Yeah, but it's better than saying I'm going to win and then getting dropped. So uh, yeah. I've got a I've got a really good friend who got me into Zwift, and he um he's been messaging me all day saying, make sure you warm up half an hour beforehand, sprint across the start line. Uh, I'll, I'll help you pace back on when you get dropped, <laughs> yeah, <cool. laughs> which is really nice of him. But I'm, I'm a bit worried. I think, I think I'm think i gonna start warming up now. <laughs> Are we allowed to start warming up? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Let's see the, uh, the definitely get the, get the warm up going because you got 219 and climbing. Zwifter is getting ready to go. We got about a minute 12 left to the start of the race. Thanks so much for jumping in with those pre race comments. We're gonna get those mics off you guys, and uh, we will get going in about one minute to the start of this race up the up the Zwift up the Zwift with the GCN presenters here. Let's take a you know quick look over at Zwift Power. If you want to follow along over on ZwiftPower.com uh, with the live results. You can do so. Uh, go ahead and find the GCN race series over there. Uh, the race is uh, real easy to find in events. It should be right on the front page when you go to ZwiftPower.com. I'll be following along with the results there as well. It looks like we do have a lot of big hitters jumping into the race. Leandro Messiano. We have the UK national champion, Kim Little. Chris Beck's up in there. Lionel Vijasin. I mean, some of the top racers have signed in for this race with 25 seconds to start. I'm super excited to see who might take it down for the overall, as well as follow along with the uh, GCN presenters here on the day. A couple of more names here. Adrian Timmis. We see Michael Dam in there. Mike Davis from Team Experimental. Morton Vang from Norway. Riders from all over the world out on Zwift. If this is your first time checking out what Zwift is, we are out here racing on the Alp de Zwift, a replication of the Alp de Zwift. Up to us, uh, massive multiplayer online game and training platform in which racers from all over the world are competing against each other from their homes or wherever their bike might be set up. Their avatars are representing their efforts out on course. The race has gotten going. We've got 1,228 people out on course racing each other, getting ready to take on the Alp de Zwift. Let's jump into some of this racing action and see how it is going to play out. As you can see here, there is the yellow beacon. I'm assuming that's going to most likely be Emma. Yeah, it is Emma Pooley that is going to be having the beacon out there today. We'll be following along with her as closely as we possibly can to see how things do work out for her race. But uh, let's we're going to take a look at the front end of the 
the race here momentarily just to see how things are going to play out between the uh, initial attacks as racers may be able to try and break away a little bit here. T. Larson here, DBR, as you can see. Connellan up toward the front there, M. Dam, and Henderson is there as Michaels toward the front. This is always the initial kicks that we do see out on the starts. More like a cyclocross race, a lot of people say, or MTB race, the way that they do start off from the gun. Uh, MS seems to be doing just fine, hanging out in and amongst the uh, lead group here pretty closely, and not getting dropped off. Adrian Timmis, as you can see, X2 de France uh, level rider here, part of the Pro Peloton back in the day, hanging out here, riding for eSports uh, cadence, it looks like. Moving back, we do have Adam Zimmerman in the race. U.S. National Champion looks to have showed up. Uh, would we have the U.S. National Champion kit on uh, underneath that GCN kit uh, that everyone is donning on the day? Lots of teams have shown up, it looks like. If you didn't, aren't, or if you're unfamiliar with the world of Zwift racing. There's an entire culture of Zwift racing out there with lots of teams that are representing, uh, that, that are represented out there. We do have Fusion Esports out there. I've seen Team Draft. The Vikings team is out there. FSK, as I can see, I believe. We do have Vision Cycling that has shown up as well. So keep an eye out for the teams out there as they are going to be most likely working together to keep the uh, pace where they want to want to keep it. Emma now just struggling a little bit, it looks like, to hang on to the front group. We'll see if she can do so as I do move back on my Zwift here to see if she can, is just starting to get dropped off from this lead group. It looks like she does have a solid pack, though, around her. 5.8 watts per kilogram currently trying to hang on. Up and out of the saddles, you can see there, really putting in an effort. 280 watts, 167 beats per minute. She does have a solid wheel here, it looks like, to hang on to. We were chatting a little bit before the race talking about how does drafting work. She got dropped in the first race that she did out on Zwift. And so uh, it looks like just starting to jump into the pack here. And we'll see if she can find a wheel and calm down that watts per kilogram. Calm down that heart rate because we are just getting into the volcano. This is the Tour of Fire and Ice out on Zwift. It is a course that ends at the top of the Alp de Zwift. But it goes through the volcano first, first heads on through o over toward Ocean Boulevard, Boulevard for a moment and then up toward the entrance to the Mayan jungle. Enters the jungle momentarily and it takes a right hand turn onto the actual up the Zwift course. So there's quite a little bit of a lead in here. Open up the legs a little bit, get a little bit of a warm up as you head toward the Up the Zwift. Definitely a difficult day on the bike. It's at least a 15 to 20 minute warm up over to the climb. And then on top of that, we're going to have somewhere between most likely uh, winning time around 37 to 38 minutes uh, for the overall and uh, probably somewhere closer to the 50 or so for uh, Emma and the rest, but we'll see uh, how that ends up working out here. Emma is definitely in the lead pack here. We can see 5.3 the watts per kilogram consistently. This is an amazing effort already coming from Emma. Now, as you can see, the verified badge next to her name there, the yellow beacon, that's what we're going to be following along with most of the way. Lots of arrow power-ups and drafting power-ups being dropped. If you're unfamiliar with power-ups and what, Zwift's, what Zwift has for those abilities in-game, they are actually power-ups that you can grab, abilities that you can grab as you go through uh, start-finish banners, lap banners, sprint banners, or KOM banners. Uh, anytime that you do go th under those banners or those spots out on course and you do not have a power-up already, you can gain a power-up. Those power-ups can be arrow power-ups, they can be drafting power-ups, they can be feather power-ups. Each one does something different. Drafting power-up is obviously going to reduce the effort that you can put out to draft on another individual, uh, essentially forming some sort of like almost like a, 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 a stronger draft for you amongst the pack uh, for a arrow power up it is a reduction on the amount of effort you have to put out to get speed so it reduces the almost like drag or wind there's no wind actually in his whip but the dr or drag in the on the avatar at that time and then also it uh, does also with the feather power up it reduces the weight on your avatar uh, for a short period of time so lots 
lots of power-ups you can get. There's also, if you're unlucky, uh, if you're in the middle of a race and you've, you don't have a power-up and you get the experience points, unless you're really, really interested in leveling up, uh, it gives you a bonus experience uh, rather than a power-up that you can use against your competitors. So looks like about 155th place right now for Emma. We do have a little bit of an attack up toward the front end of the race here, it looks like, and it's going to be looking forward. Uh, Zimmerman sitting pretty steady there toward mid-pack, about 100th place or so. Couple little attacks up toward the front here at this point. Not real serious or anything. Uh, we are seeing Sean Vinton again, who did take the W in the last race up toward the front, so most likely looking to try and repeat his win up and over the top of the Alpha Zwift that was a couple of weeks ago. Jay Herman here from Vision Cycling up toward the front. Larson as well. Firmling here coming from Fusion Esports uh, team, it looks like. T Vest also from that Fusion Esports cycling team. Uh, and a lot of, I'm seeing esports. A lot of times showing up in a lot in a few of these uh, new teams that are developing out on Zwift. Interesting to see after the recent announcements coming from the UCI that uh, the teams in the community are already responding to that uh, call out toward an esports amongst uh, amongst the racers and the racing community already starting to identify themselves a lot of these riders as indoor specialists actually we're starting to see that amongst the names and people starting to make it its own genre of racing which has been really interesting to see uh, with national champions out there out on Zwift uh, you know being recognized it's it's pretty amazing to see how this is developing here so I am seeing Dig Deep Coaching out on course here as well and it's most likely Dan Fleeman another ex-professional rider jumping out on course it looks like taking on adrian timis as well another uh professional rider hopping marita is out there mountain biker riding from marita factory team so a lot of strong hitters soren bay from team experimental the danish national champion is out on course so it looks like we've got some of the strongest of the strongest that have shown up uh on the day making their way toward the front making sure they don't have their nose in the wind too much but with so many riders and it looks like a lot on the line for them to try and take this down in front of a huge crowd of viewers actually as we are seeing um, an amazing 400 626 current viewers here over on Facebook uh, a, a whole lot of people have tuned in for this if you do have any questions or comments you want to bring in who you think your favorite is for the race you can go ahead and do so we'll keep eyes out on that uh, for the social media integration here as best as we possibly can and we'll definitely be watching for your questions and comments as they do come through as they do head on over toward Ocean Boulevard here. Now they are taking their way on over toward the marina, and then they will take a right-hand turn after they pass the windmills, or as they go through the windmills on to the turn toward the mine jungle. There'll be a little bit of a kick there. That's where things are actually going to start to uh, break apart, I would assume. Things are going to be pretty calm at this point, but the average watts per kilogram seems to be very high already, actually, and there is a split. Uh, it looks like in the group that happened a little bit unexpectedly. I think that was on the right-hand turn on the Ocean Boulevard. And we do see Emma here just hanging on about 152nd place right now, trying to grab back onto the wheels of this little chase group. And they're almost back on terms with the front end of the race there. You can see the pack there just about eight seconds up. And if Emma does grab on the wheel and does get a little pull here from, uh, it looks like, uh, will be C. Kelly not actually doing the work. Emma actually making her way to the front, doing the work for this pack and trying to take the bull by the horns here and make it happen. Up in the six watts per kilogram, the comp com competitive nature of this world champion, man, just trying to get back on terms with the front of this race. Now, maybe wants to back it off. She can't hear me here, but I, maybe she can back it off just a little bit and trust the group to bring things back. There will be a climb. I think her watts per kilogram will come into her favor as they do hit that uh, little bit of uphill uh, uphill grading here in just a moment as they take this right-hand turn on to the, uh, well, this is the, this is the course of a Tour and Fire Night. So as part of that, they do start the reverse Watopia uh, KOM up the Watopia Mountain. So this is actually the reverse start of the reverse Watopia Mountain, actually. Then they will take a right-hand turn on to the Mayan Jungle, descend all the way down into the bot almost the bottom of the of the jungle uh, Mayan jungle and then take a right hand turn onto that up the Zwift. you can see uh, off in the distance there both the Watopia mountain and then on the right there you do see that 
Alp the Zwift there with the clouds circling the statue at the top there. So very cool to see. Um, now, toward the front end of the race, now we do some, see some attacks already starting. We are an 8% gradient here. We do have Matt Brandt out there. Our bike now, 8 watts per kilogram. Tim is now Christian going into 8.2 watts per kilogram. Already the riders starting to get a little bit antsy with a whole lot of racing to come. Lionel Vijasin now here coming out of Belgium. Super strong cyclocross racer in real life. Killing it here toward the front. No, he was a part of a couple of pretty big cyclocross races recently. We'll see if that does come into his advantage here in this race out here today. A cyclocross racing essentially is just a lot of strong punches over and over again during a time trial. So uh, Leo, we are seeing um, Messiano here. The poison dart, the frog, they call him as well. Riding for team draft up toward the front, but it is Lionel who is taking up the front end of this race. Six watts per kilogram coming from Lionel. Kim Little, the UK national champion, right on his wheel as well. We'll see if uh, this does break things apart. As it is into that six to seven watts per kilogram. All the responses are starting to open up from the riders that are the cream of the crop uh, amongst the Zwifters out here for sure. So I am assuming that there is going to be a break here. Matt Brandt from Draft kind of taking up, it looks like, the bulk of the chase now. Casey Shum is out there from Team Experimental. Awesome Brock as well as Soren Bray hanging on there. I think this is going to stay together from about 40th on, maybe up into even 60th place. But now we are starting to see the elastic snap right around 60th place place or so amongst the riders. James Hodges from the KRT team. I wouldn't count him out, but things are definitely, if we get an, a helicopter view here at all, we'll definitely start to see that the elastic is starting to snap with a crazy pace starting to be set up toward the front. And it looks like right around 40th or place there with Davis, Walderman, uh, as well as Larson is right around where things are starting to break apart. We're going to see if the riders do get back on terms as they come over the Liberty Crest they will take a right-hand turn here in just a moment into that mild mine jungle jungle section. If they were to continue on, it would be all the way to the top of the Watopia Mountain. But it is this right-hand turn. It will get a little bit of reprieve. They do take the right, and then it is still kind of an uphill. And then they will go. Uh, it'll it'll bend left into a long downhill section. Uh, and it'll be a lot of rest that riders will be looking for to kind of back off a little bit, get their heart rates down, and then find themselves climbing at the bottom of the Up the Zwift in just about probably five minutes or so. Hodges here now, 3.2 watts per kilogram. That we're, we're James Hodges out there, uh, the nickname The Cake is a Lie, right for the KRT, the KISS Racing Team, uh, one of the well known teams in, uh, that does organize a lot of races out on Zwift. He's uh, trying to hang on about 7.1 watts per kilogram to try and get back on terms about 61st place or so for him. We're looking at V Mail here right now from KRT as well, up in that sixth place. Kim Little now, though, on an attack. Interesting to see that Kim is very early on looking for a gap and trying to get away. Now, this is interesting if he's looking for a little bit of a fade climb. Six watts per kilogram here, perhaps looking for some wiggle room uh, to get away and have a little bit of a time uh, gap so that he can put the pressure on other riders as the climb does start to kick up and over the top of his of, of their FTP and have to close that down very early. 5.2 watts per kilogram here coming from him. Maybe not wanting, though, the other riders who have been dropped off to get back on terms. You know, that might be a part of the tactic here. He says, no, we don't want anybody to be with us, not getting any kind of um, ride to the bottom of the Elpis at this point. Make sure that the work that was put in to get the, the drop on these other riders pays off. And uh, that looks like it is happening as there's definitely a split back there. A couple of riders still fighting to get back on terms. And it is a two-second gap, though, for the UK national champion here, Kim Little here. E. Mosley there as well, trying to chase that down. Looks like 5.5 watts per kilogram is going to bring it back together there. Moberg here coming from Fusion Esports Cycling Team as well. And it will be weird to hold there, sitting in, sitting in fifth place, and then S. Merritt. Uh, in sixth. Hoppy Marina now taking up that sixth place position actually. He's actually an in real life teammate of Kim Little. Maybe a little communication going on between the two riders out of the UK. He uh, riding also for that Marita factory team in real life. Hoppy does not ride for Team Experimental in game uh, as Kim does. So different teams in the genres 
obviously riding for the same mountain bike team though in real life dan fleeman making his way to the front dig deep coaching now being represented in ddc as you can see messanillo their draft still hanging in adrian timis west is there alex west actually is that right uh riding for riding team ahdr actually i'm not sure if that is actually the same a west uh, we'll have to wait and see if I can get that right. Coming out of New Zealand, so I have a feeling that is uh, the same rider that was a semi, uh, a uh, finalist in the... Uh, let's see if I can get confirmation from the productions here. If uh, Alex West is actually in the race out here today. I'm seeing A West. It says Team AHDR, so maybe in... Uh, the and it says ZAF. I'm assuming Zwift Academy finds 28 teams. So I'm I'm almost positive this is Alex West actually. So I'll be watching out for him. I believe he took the W. Uh, yes, he did. He took the W in the Zwift Academy finals race up the up the Zwift just a couple weeks just a couple weeks ago. So I'll be watching out him for the W out here today. Cool to see him that he's jumped into the race, looking for a repeat on the uh, awesome result that he did get. He did take third on the day and won the race amongst the riders at the Zwift, Zwift Academy Finals. So 4.8 watts per kilogram currently coming from him. It was Ali Jones that took second. Sean Vinton, who is in the race, did take first out there. So watch out for those three out there today. Uh, I'm not sure Ali has jumped into the race, though, today. I haven't seen him out on course just yet. So uh, if he does uh, end up showing up, we'll have to see. So uh, looking back now, let's see if we do see anything going on with Emma Pooley. As uh, I do believe she was dropped off initially on the climb. She 179th police, as you can see. Uh, solid ride for her so far. I do believe she's a part of the main chase group. Now, there's a lot of time, though, to, ma the, to make up any kind of a gap at this point. As you can see down the face there, a little bit of a concentration. Uh, a lot of effort, it looks like, here to hang on. Now, a little bit of a, now look, a little bit of relaxed there, here and there. As you can see, it is that classic uh, back and forth, back and forth when it comes to dr finding the draft correctly out on Zwift. A lot of times you can lose it momentarily, have to kick a little bit to find it again, lose, lose it momentarily, have to kick to find it again. And it is definitely a consistent effort here for Emma. 4.5 watts per kilogram. This is absolutely uh, an amazing effort. Now we are looking at my Noriega here. She is killing it there. 350th place overall right now. Sitting in the B category, as you can see, a couple of rides around here. There's going to be T. Carmen as well as Medgard there. Uh, up toward the front end of, though, of this group that she's a part of. So she's definitely putting the work in, that's for sure. 206 watts, as you can see there in the upper left-hand corner. 95 RPMs spinning to win. A little bit of a smirk on the face, even, as you can see. Uh, so definitely um, having fun with the race out here today. But it's just getting started. Started. We're going to see how much fun it ends up being as the as they head into the actual uh, Alpe d'Huez Wifto. This is the restful point out on course, that's for sure. So back on the front end of the race, though, with the leaders currently uh, cruising along. Uh, 60 plus kilometers per hour, 57 kilometers per hour. Now we can see 14.8 kilometers into the race, 18 minute warm up so far. Well, it's been quite the warm up though. Lots of kicks as we've seen. 168 beats per minute. They're coming from Guy S. Lindsay out there coming out of New Zealand. As you can see 160 beats per minute. They're gonna want those heart rates to come down a little bit because they're about to take the right hand turn on the up the Zwift. And this is when the race really starts to get going that's for sure cops down here as you can see uh now this is a rider i believe did make one of the finals um for the live events actually i'll be watching out him for a solid result out there today and uh 4.3 watts per kilogram coming from him i wouldn't count him out at least for a top 10 no you know knowing that he's really proved himself uh for some of these uh live events and the qualifications so moving up to the front of the race who's going to lead things in to the up to Zwift as you head into it is going to be Whiteley. Now it is actually going to be uh, Phil Whiteley that is going to lead things for the BRT team, right for the A1 uh, for the Bolt Racing team. Now swapping on all the way back to 47th place, the 49th place for Whiteley. He moves on back. It is going to be Alex West actually who took the top spot amongst the finalists for the Zwift Academies on the Alp the Zwift uh, last time we were out here. So he is definitely out here to try and get some um maybe a little bit 
of uh, uh, show 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 that he's got something here amongst amongst the riders here and take down a not not a vengeance because he won the last one but uh, definitely show that he's got it again here out on course. See back here now as you can see coming out of the U.S. of A. We got Hughesball there as well. Fusion Vinter as well is out there. Uh, it looks like Keelum here riding for. Uh, well, it looks like Z, uh, Vader actually for ZWC. Vujasin there though, just ahead of him, coming out of Belgium now. And uh, 7.2 watts per kilogram coming from Lionel. Absolutely a crazy pace. Now, this is usually how it goes though, out on uh, Zwift, as they, you know, have this initial, uh, the, the turn 21 is always this crazy kick because you can see with the numbers um if you if we did a little mini map up on the right hand side the numbers actually represent uh you know dark red orange yellow they represent how difficult each pass is and we're gonna have 21 passes they have to take on and the first one is in the red eight percent all the way up into i think it hits like 12 12 percent a percent at some point i think at the mac i'm not positive on the exact percentage but it is gets really really difficult and you always have this initial kick from the racers to see if they can break things apart right off the bat go a little bit over that threshold and then settle in amongst the riders that did make it uh, for that initial kick so as we can see the riders toward the front are putting in that effort to try and break things apart and they are doing just that there are about four off the front as we can see it is going to be Egner, Lindsay, it's going to be Vijasin and then Messineo uh, that are leading things out now Emma Pooley jumping into the climb now 164th place and starting to pick riders off this is what I was expecting 5.4 watts per kilogram as you can see steady time trial now and she weighs 46 kilos so definitely going to be at her advantage and i think that she's most likely going to be happy that she uh you know held back on trying to stay with that lead group and start picking off riders one by one as you can see up in front of her now 4.5 watts per kilogram, 3.8 watts per kilogram well she's putting out a solid 5.1 this is where the watts per kilogram are going to be the most important part of this race up and out of the saddle there both the riders there taking on the force both of them are on kicker climbs actually today and so they do definitely as you can see their um their bikes are raising and, and, and lowering raising and lowering with each section of the course as it does go up and down with the gradients they will feel the gradients on those smart trainers they will also feel the gradients in their front uh, in the front of their bike as it does raise and up and come back down with each section of that gradient. So very much that live repl replication there uh, out on course. It looks like May is definitely having a lot of fun there, smiling a little bit and uh, starting to get into her rhythm as she's going to be starting the climb here. Emma now up and out of the saddle, a lot of focus there, really taking on each part of the gradient as you can see and trying to work her way through each of the riders. Definitely a good little gap though between herself and the front runners. But uh, currently sitting, it looks like May here, 335th place and making her way through some of the riders here, 4.2 watts per kilogram. I think both of them being very experienced racers are going to start picking off riders that may be a little bit too much effort up front. As you just see, May was starting right around 335, now 331. So definitely picking off riders here with a little bit of smirk on the face, getting into her own rhythm. Emma there with that force, though, you can see. This focus and just looking to get into that rhythm, into that cadence there, and really pushing through each section, um, each each section as it comes at her with that gradient. You can see a little bit of a heel drop there, so you do see that she's got that cadence right. She's got that form to try and have the right kind of effort all the way through. Messineo though is up toward the front, and uh, at the front of the race is going to be Messineo on the attack, but Emma has passed 20 riders since she started since she started to climb actually all the way up to 135th place consistently picking riders off and uh let's make sure to give her as many ride-ons as you possibly can to encourage her on as she goes on this epic climb out here to take on the rest of the zwifters that have jumped into the race 1228 of them to be exact. Now we're back at the front end of the race though. Messi Neo, the poison dart, has a four second gap actually amongst the rest of the riders. This is one of the winningest riders amongst all Zwift racers actually as of recently. 6.8 watts per kilogram coming from the dart here. Absolutely killing. 183 beats per minute on the attack. And hug here, four seconds back from him actually. Vujas in there, Lionel now trying to chase it down there. It is going out to five seconds. This might be a solo runaway. For the poison dart, we'll see if he can make it happen. 
It is a chase group of three trying to bring it back. It is going to be Vijasin, Vladic, as well as Hug coming out of Switzerland trying to bring that back. The winner of the last race uh, was a part of the Zwift Academy Finals race. It is going to be Sean Vinton there about uh, three seconds back from the chase group. And then it's going to be C. Beck actually of the US of A. That is quite the spot for Beck to be in here. Super strong climber, mountain biker actually, uh, endurance mountain biker. I believe he does do a lot of the National Endurance Series, the 100 milers, if I'm not incorrect. I do from, uh, recognize him from some of the pro racing days I was a part of. So it looked good to see Beck out there killing it. And uh, he's going to have some endurance on the day. It definitely is used to the kind of force that needs to be thrown down for this kind of climbing. It is going to be Alex West, three seconds back from that. Uh, the rider who did win the Zwift Academy Finals race up the up the Zwift, not the Zwift Academy Finals overall itself, but was one of the finals that did go to the training camp. And uh, coming out of New Zealand, looking to try and perhaps win today or at least get another podium out here today. Lindsay, right on his wheel. That's Lindsay here coming out of New Zealand as well. Perhaps a couple of friends here working together to try and bring back the front end of this race. M. Apers here coming out of Belgium there. It looks like uh, with Vader right on his wheel. It is going to be Killam there coming out of Canada. And there's going to be Hughes Bell riding for the Fusion Esports cycling team taking up the 12th place out there now. Dig Deep Coaching's out there as well. DDC with Dan Fleeman hanging on to the wheel. So that rounds out the top 12 or so amongst the riders. I'm going to take a quick look over at ZwiftPower.com, see what the averages have been so far in the live results. You can do so too if you want to head on over to ZwiftPower.com. And uh, if you do connect your Zwift account, so you head on over to Zwift.com, make an account, and uh, go ahead and connect your account with the uh, the backend API to ZwiftPower.com by giving them the rights to the data that you give to Zwift. That makes it so all of your racing and all of your events are tracked by ZwiftPower.com. And then you can go ahead and see all of that live data from the riders, actually, uh, out on Zwift, as well as your data in conjunction with all of those riders. So Leandro Messonil here, Leading things out has currently averaged 5.4 watts per kilogram for the duration of the race so far. Uh, Nikki H out there for innovation, 5.4 as well. Chris Beck, 5.1. Lionel Vijasin, 5.1. Sean Vinton, Sam Lindsay, as well as Alex West, all around that 5.2, 5.3. So it's a 5.0 plus for anybody in the looks like top 20, even top 30 at this point. It's quite the effort to hang on with these front end runners and they've already in about 26 minutes into the race so some crazy numbers being put out here today um, there is a lot of zada verification badge action badges out there over on zwipower.com so a lot of verified riders as well uh, with those badges next to their name that just means if you do head on if you do over to zwipower.com and you're looking for those who are like a little bit more legit zwipower's kind of done some background checks that means they've given power files real life power files uh to uh Zwift Power admins to check on them and say, hey, can you put these numbers out in real life? They've checked on that. They say, yep, it looks like this is verified. And then they go ahead and give that badge to those riders because sometimes they do get flagged that they're putting out things that look like, eh, that's pretty much into pro peloton type numbers for those who uh, a lot of times you do questions a lot about those realities here. So the dart here does have that Zada badge next to his name, killing it here up toward the front end of the race now. And now we're going back to Emma now. 116th plate, make up another 20 places since we looked at her last. 4.5 watts per kilogram from her. We are seeing Bibby there. It looks, is that, uh, is that a, am I correct? I think that that's Ian Bibby right on the wheel with her. So Ian now leading out Emma Pooley, actually. A couple of pro riders. This is absolutely awesome. The whole community showing up out here. Among, you know, cycling world is a small world. The more I get involved in it, the more that we uh, connect with the riders from all over the world. Zwift has brought them all together onto this single platform in so many different events, so many different circumstances. It's so cool to see. Ian here leading out Emma, Emma a little bit here, trying to push the pace. Emma out and out of the saddle here, really grinding against the pace here now as you can see she's currently i believe on turn 17 heading to turn 17 it looks like here now and uh about one of the hardest places actually with those red red gradients right now you know up into i believe about a 10 percent gradient or so and it really fluctuates a lot on this section of the course. So really, really difficult uh, for Emma here now. 4.9 watts per kilogram, but looks like she's doing just fine. 
br bringing riders in one by one. Now back to 117, though, as you can see, 162 beats per minute. It'll be interesting to see what her threshold is, uh, that which she can handle all the way through the race. Up in the 5.4 now, as you can see, as it really starts to kick up uh, through this section of the course. Nice little pack, though, around her, giving her a little bit of reprieve through the section of the course that are a little bit flatter, as you can see. Uh, and 4.1 now coming from her 164 beats per minute now. So May here now currently currently May though 292 she started in about 350 place or so she's made up about 50 spots since she jumped into this climb here now so going into it looks like uh, I believe this is going to be turn 18 here in just a moment and so good to see May absolutely hammering away 240 watts or so at this point up and out of the saddle the smiles are starting to turn into grimaces though as they do have a lot of climbing ahead of them yet to go we're only about 10 minutes into this climb now 30 minutes into the race and now I think the reality of what is in front of these riders is starting to settle in and now it's going to be time to really start to focus really start to uh, turn you know get into that steady rhythm get into that cadence what can I really put out for this whole duration have I gone over effort is this been too much will I be able to hang on to this pace all the way top does look like Emma there looking for a wheel dropping the watts per kilogram into that 3.8 first time we've really seen about a 3.8 from her or so so looks like trying to bring that back heart rates dropped down about five beats it was 162 or two for a moment there um and uh was up into that 160s actually for quite a while so maybe backing off just a little we do see a little bit of extra energy coming into the face though and also the cadence going up a little bit looks like she's really starting to find her uh a second window almost actually and now up into 5.19 watts per kilogram starting to pick off riders again so i have a feeling that emma now through this next section as she does spin out those legs get some of that lactic acid to flush out there a little bit now she's really going to go to work and start to bring back maybe a top 100 it'd be interesting to see if she can get into that top 100 amongst the riders make sure to jump into your zwift companion app and give uh give those uh jump into your zwift companion app if you can find emma out there and give those ride-ons as you can do if you haven't done so make sure to download your zwift companion app as you can inter companion app as you can interact with zwift uh, at any time, actually, with that companion up. Back up to the front of the race here. Lionel Vijasin now trying to close things down, but it is a crazy gap all the way up to Messineo here. Three-second gap between him and G. Gladich now. Uh, and uh, Gladich here, 5.7 watts per kilogram, three seconds back. Vinton there is not with him, actually. Gladich with a kick up in that 10 real quick watts per kilogram interesting to see here now but Vinton now trying to bring that back using his feather power up interesting to see now there are different sections out on course of the Alpha Zwift if you're unfamiliar with it, it's interesting how this works on the Alpha Zwift uh, there are different timed sections they aren't uh, they're, they're marked by by little uh, glowing lights across the road and during those sections the first one is is uh, during that the the little underground um, and you can actually there's, there's there's three I believe there's three of them out on course and uh, you can grab power-ups at each one of those sections if you make that section within a, within a certain time limit actually so uh, and it is based on your own personal best times I believe through those uh, each one of those sections you have to be a per certain percentage I believe of your personal best uh, out on course actually now I might be incorrect about how you get those but I believe that's how it works and so uh, it looks like Vincent here has used uh, Vincent Sean Vincent did use one of those power-ups just now to try and close the gap to the front back with Emma Pooley though uh, just momentarily there and uh, it looks like she is picking off riders one by one but Sean here who did just use that feather power up 6.4 watts per kilogram looks like he is determined to close this gap down and make it a league group of three uh mess and neil though not letting that happen still consistent six plus watts per kilogram but up into that 185 beats per minute i'm gonna take a quick look over at zwippower.com see what it has to say about his max heart rates and stuff for the races that he's done he does max out it looks like uh he did do uh back on september 22nd actually he did a team time trial for 206 beats per minute uh, at, uh it looks like for his max 
He averaged about 180 though, so it looks like 180, uh, 180 to 188, somewhere in those that range, depending on the heat of the day, most likely, is what Messineo can average. It looks like he is right around where he can average 5.8 watts per kilogram currently from him. The best that we've seen for him as far as watts per kilogram is going to be about 5.8 for these longer races. And so uh, back on the 4th of November, WBR Road to the Sky climbing race, Messineo did throw down a 56 minute 5.8 watts per kilogram. That was one of his best. That is a 200 beat per minute max. So be watching out for Messineo to be able to hang on to maybe this kind of a pace. Glad it's just trying to close it down to him, it looks like. Uh, Glad it's, I do not believe, has any uh zada badge approval so perhaps not going to be and i i don't think gladys just actually even uh got the background api uh connected there so maybe not going to be a part of the results there. but vinton here trying to close it down uh to these front two runners here making a three-man group toward the front hug there 5.7 watts per kilogram along with apers hug here solo chase for him going to need maybe a hug from a couple other riders out there to try and uh, bring this back together. He's not going to have any benefit of any draft uh, from anybody out there out on course. 5.8 consistently from the rider coming out of Switzerland with the beard out there and the glasses at least looking good while he is making this climb happen. 180 beats per minute and you know we look at these avatars they've got a cool you know they've got this like calm cool look on the face right now but this rider's got in real life if we had the expression on the face 181 beat per minute i mean it's uh, gonna be this is gonna be absolute suffer face now vinton has come across very quickly to these riders and now going right on by actually and the dart here now having a little bit of a struggle to hang on and 170 beats per minute here coming from the australian rider now and sean vinton now 6.2 watts become 170 beats per minute the dart here 6.2 hanging on now and gladys here right along with him so it is three riders at the front end of this race right now they are on two it looks like turn 13 so about halfway to the you know about almost halfway uh up the climb here now it looks like they're gonna be setting some record times up the top of the climb here so back to emma pooley and uh and it looks like may here emma super focused as you can see trying to get uh, you know a little as much of the cooling off as she possibly can it looks like here definitely up and out of the saddle looking to try and bring things back hopefully we can get a look here real quick at what kind of place that she's been in if she's been able to jump into that top 100 is lost places or not looks like pretty consistent here for emma 118th place out on course right now and into we'll see if we can get real quick here the uh place the placing as well as what turn she's on it does look like it is going to be turn uh 13 for her now yep heading to turn 13 now almost about halfway 4.9 watts per kilogram 158 beats per minute it looks like that is going to be the consistent threshold pace that she's gonna be looking for she you know a lot of times you do start these races a little bit over the top of what you can handle all the way through it does look like uh may is settled into it looks like 292nd place she was about 350th or so at the start so she brings it back about 60 places and it looks like she found a solid group to hang with here's gonna be heard as well as fritz there coming you know uh, it looks like out of germany and now the steady effort there and a little bit of smile there coming from May. And this the focus there on Emma there up and out of saddle. Looks like looking to uh, the, the climb for her is definitely going to be taking on standing. Maybe a little bit of the running that's been going on there. Going to be a little bit more comfortable with uh, all that running training that she's been doing recently to be kind of in the rhythm up and out of the saddle in order to keep the, the power consistent. Uh, let's see if we can find some of the co qu comments and questions as they do come through. Um, Thomas Wozniak, with a little bit of correction there, appreciate their so halfway is on turn seven. Thanks a lot, Thomas. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the correction there. Are cadences of the riders correct on the screen or just computer driven animation, Martin Ross? They are correct on the screen, actually, Martin. That is a great question coming from Martin Ross. Um, Martin, so. You may you you'll see the cadence from the rider that we are looking at in the upper left hand corner and the actual avatars also spin at that cadence. So that's a great question. It is a representation of what the riders are putting out for the cadence 
in real life at that time. I do see Chris and Min hanging out in the broadcast. Good to see Carissa and Admin in the community groups. Uh, just letting everybody know it does reflect. We are seeing Claudia Barron in there as well, cheering on Team Draft. A lot of the team members of the, you know, a lot of the fellow team members, a lot of the riders out here are going to be out here cheering on all of their favorite riders. Uh, so good to see them out here cheering them on and giving encouragement. Make sure to, again, to jump on, give ride-ons to everybody that is your favorite rider out there as well. Jaffer Fetter saying, almost time for the Poison Dart Frog uh, to show the world how deadly he can be. Go, Leandro, Greg Leo, Matt Brent, Adam Zimmerman, and the rest of Team Draft coming from Jonathan Fetter. Good to see. And that's also Claudia Berry out on the screen there as well. Also from Team Draft, as you can see, the hat there. The, the, you know, the community in Zwift is so, so amazing. Really, a lot, uh, as you can see, in real life um, hats and, and swag there being made just for the teams that are community teams out on Zwift. So really, really strong community. If, if you want to be a part of a community that rides together and has a huge amount of support of each other, you can always find teams. Uh, ZwiftPower.com, as well as a lot of the Facebook group, book groups, are great places to look for teams to be a part of. Start racing, start doing group rides, doing group workouts, lots of stuff to do there. So as you can see, there's John from Feather with his comments there about Team Draft cheering on all of his teammates. Uh, Greg Leal looks. Greg Leal's out there. Did not know in the Pens podcast uh, uh, co-host and, and 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 organizer there is actually out in the race. I'm hearing Adam Zimmerman, obviously a part of Team Draft, U.S. national champion, as well as a finalist at the USA uh, at, at the uh, North American Kiss Crit Series this past year. So lots of strong riders out there today. Still looking at May Noriega here. Uh, state MTB stage racer in the last month jumped onto the GCN uh, crew for the commentators out on the Alp the Zwift right now. 296th place currently looking pretty comfortable. Emma still super focused as you can see here and uh, trying to bring back a few places. Now the cane's coming on up you can see so most likely uh, getting into a little bit of a lesser gradient at this point out on course here up stopping out of the saddle as the kicker climb is uh going down a little bit it looks like they're you know with the front end of her bike it looks like so definitely a section of the course that's going to be a little less on the gradient that she's going to be feeling the uh the riders are going to feel the gradient in game if you're unfamiliar with how zwift works the uh she is on a smart trainer that is going to definitely be making her feel those gradients now as you can see in the upper right hand corner we have the gradient for um the uh the rider that is helping us observe right now so that is not going to be what emma is going to be feeling right now but since she is on turn 10 heading into turn 10 here it is going to be a lot less of a gradient i'm assuming going to be right around five now kicking into um, that looks about about seven percent gradient should be doing right about at this moment and you can see the rider is up another sound 4.2 watts per kilogram right now dropping into 155s and uh, 120, 127th place. So solid effort from her so far. Back in with the leaders, though, we are going to be jumping in with Sean Vinton again. 5.9 watts per kilogram, as you can see. Messi Neal here. It's going to be these two, it looks like, all the way to the top. Unless we see some sort of crazy effort there from Gladich and Hug. It, I believe it's going to be a battle between the dart from Team Draft and Sean Vinton from Innovation out there today. As they do head, it looks like through, if I get this correctly, they're on turn six. On turn six. So this is actually going to be a fast race. Absolutely demolishing this climb. This is the section. So I've done this climb, um, I think, 27 to 30 times, somewhere around there. I, I wanted to get that masochist. Uh, achievement done in game as fast as possible. So I was doing the Alpha Zwift almost every day for a while since it, when it first launched, and uh, it is 25 times to the top for the masochist achievement. Um, and I, re you know, I remember this section of the course very, very well. This is the moment where you start thinking, when do I ramp it up for the final over threshold attack? When, at what point can I actually really start to go into that final push that's over what is comfortably hard right so your threshold is comfortably hard what can i handle for one hour straight and um this is the point at which you start thinking about going to uncomfortably hard i can't handle this for another five to ten minutes you start getting into that section we start going into a little more vo2 you start going into a little more of the oxygen i can get to my legs cannot handle 
the uh, the effort that I am putting out right now, and the, and the lactate starts building up and building up and building up. It looks like these riders have backed off enough to maybe have that left. As I'm seeing, 180 beats from it here coming, or 170 beats here com coming from Vinton. At least Vinton looks like he can handle a little bit more. The Dart, though, he's starting to rise that heart rate up there. He was down the 180s, low 180s for a while. Now into 189, 190. The clearing of the lactate is going to be a little more difficult here for the Dart here. We're going to see if he can hit the bullseye or not. Not. not sure the the leap is going to be coming from the frog as Vinton has shown that he has got the legs most of the time to take it down for innovation out here today. Glad it's 25 seconds back. Hug 58. They're not going to be a threat, I believe, for this race out here today. Let's start hearing the predictions there from the from the social media. We'll be watching for them. Who do you think is going to win between Vinton and and the dart let us know. We're going to get a poll actually up where you can vote over on Facebook about who you think is going to win on the day. Is it going to be Vincent? Is it going to be the dart? Team draft, innovation, some of the, the most well-known teams actually out on Zwift for Zwift Racing. Gladys 5.8 watts per kilogram. Hug there as well a little ways back. Merritt now one, uh, seven, 7 seconds back from them. And there is a solid chase group um, you know, behind here. You know, There's a solo rider with Hug and then it's going to be um, C. Beck along with Hughes Ball and then it's going to be Merritt on the attack. C. Beck actually up and out of the saddle. 168 beats per minute him momentarily. 390 watts trying to make the break happen to bring back some seconds up to hug and they might be able to take down for a fourth place even maybe bring back gladich on the day we'll see if that can happen but uh the poll is live over on facebook make sure you uh make sure that you go ahead and vote let us know who you think is going to win on the day we'll get those results in the poll uh momentarily uh but you can vote uh, if you are watching on a browser i'm going to go ahead and do it myself as well uh, but if you are watching on a browser you'll be able to see it over the top of the uh you'll be able to see over the top of the broadcast if you are watching on a mobile device it'll be on the bottom of the broadcast i'm going to go ahead and throw down my vote for mess and neo vinton i'm seeing holding down a solid 57 percent though mess and neo there with 43 percent what's really cool about these new polls is you can see which one of your friends voted for what though so uh that's absolutely awesome it looks like greg leo's taking the the poll claudia Barrian has chris amenis has as well so great to see everybody participating in that new feature over on the Facebook Live uh, today. Currently holding on a solid 58% on the day, though, for the votes. Sean Vinton looks to be the favorite so far. Messonio throwing down seven watts because I'm trying to close things down. Let's see who gets lucky here as we definitely have the next section, of course, where a power-up is going to be rewarded in just a moment. So this is going to be very crucial. We know that Vinton already threw down an, uh, a feather power-up earlier so he's definitely going to have uh you know a little bit of rng is going to be in the play here for how they're going to be able to throw down for the win as you can see just a little ways up here there's going to be a couple of lights across um the uh across the the road here actually this right on section right here that's where they actually are able to pick it up or not and we'll see if that's uh was able to award one of the award the riders something that's going to give them the ability to take the win the poll is going to be ending right now we're going to be able to see who is going to take it down it is vinton with 55 percent so pretty even but Favor definitely in Vinton, you know, to, Vin, to Sean Vinton out there, and he has shown us exactly why right now. 6.9 watts per kilogram coming from him, 173 beats per minute. Messineo with a 45% total out there today for the vote. Messineo now getting dropped off, and it looks like he's going to need some sort of power up to bring this back. 187 beats per minute for the, the poison dart. Not able to leap across right now. Vinton on the attack, going into the final turns. Turn three now. This is where it matters the most, I think, for this section, for, for these sections of the course, for these riders, whether or not they're going to win. 6.7 watts per kilogram. Vinton really starting to wrap it up. 774 beats per minute. Vinton just walking away with this one now. And the dart just letting it go. 184. The heart rate's dropping, knowing he's got to let it go. This is the max of what I can handle. I think he tried hanging on as best as he could with the attacks of Vinton, but Vinton showing that he's got the power to win it out there today. He did take the win a couple of weeks ago with the Zwift Academy Finals. It looks like he's going to repeat on the day. Poison Dart, though, 5.6, solid. 
solid effort here, though, between the riders. Back on over to Emma Pooley and May. Let's see how they are turning out. It looks like both of them up out of the saddle there on those kicker climbs, letting those gradients come back to them. Emma, super focused, as you can see, focused as you can see here. She's brought the heart rate up another 10 beats, back to 120th. So she's lost a couple of places, definitely quite a few to take down, to, uh, quite a few turns to take down, as well as riders to take down still. On to turn seven right now. Going to take that left-hand turn past the tents here on Dutch Corner here. One or 19th place, one by one, trying to bring him back. It is going to be K. Neal that is going to be the rider who is the uh, who is the rabbit up ahead to try and bring back. Emma with a little bit of chatter there legit about what's happening there in front of her and uh, maybe a couple of those running excuses coming out just now. Just kidding, of course. Emma's doing a great job out there right now. Up and out of the saddle. 5.3 watts per kilogram. 164 beats per minute. And now starting to turn the screws herself up toward the front there 117th place two seconds up to awesome brink we'll see if she can bring that back be great if she can bring it back to top 100 let's make that the goal for emma hopefully she can hear us over there maybe we can get some of the on-site text say that the broadcast is looking top 100 that's the goal out there emma let's get everybody out onto your companion apps cheer her on make sure you're letting emma know that you're cheering in her corner and that uh the goal is top 100 emma bring it up back she's chatting away let's go emma look at this like this not if you're talking not working hard enough right right so we'll see if we can get some water's bazookas out of emma here and some cheer out a big old smile on the face there coming from her let's bring it on back and uh get that top 100 going for Pooley. we've got may there also with a big old smile as well on her face 4.6 watts per kilogram currently 55 rpm so definitely now coming uh 2.5 here from may as she heads in to turn eight herself on a solid uh, uphill gradient in the snow now. And May here, 2.2 watts per kilogram, 60, no, 70 RPM now. Fluctuating a whole lot, it looks like here. She's looking to try and find a rhythm here. Back to the 326th place. So maybe went a little bit too much into the red as she's starting to lose some places. We'll see if she can hang on to those rabbits up ahead of her with AL there coming out of France. It is going to be another rider, it looks like, out of Ireland, about four seconds back. Back in with Sean Vinton, it sounds like, as she's on the home stretch here with... was. Even able to grab a feather power-up. Pretty lucky there. Second, I think, feather power-up up the Alpha Zwift today. He did grab that as he went through that little ride-on uh, marker on the pass on turn, I believe it was, three out there. 6.5 watts per kilogram. Steady 450 watts here. Vinton just demolishing himself here at 173 beats per minute. The dart now up in the 5.6 watts per kilogram. 186 beats per minute now. And it looks like he's just going to not cruise across the line, but keep it steady here at 180. And suffer for the second place, but definitely be taking down a podium out here today. Glad it's here now, 7.0 consistent, trying to walk away from Hogsdale. We'll give him a ride on for his effort there. Vinton now, kind of a two tier. It's a very difficult finish. It is a little bit tricky, actually, as you're putting out that effort. A lot of times you think that this crest here that you're about to look over is the finish, but it's actually a little bit of a deceiving effort. You give one kick and then it levels out a little bit and then you got to give another kick before it flattens out. And then it's a spin up because you lose that resistance and it's almost like, can I sprint to get these watts going again and get that speed going again? Because it is a flat. So it is a very difficult finish because of that. This little trick here on you, 11% gradient or so, then you head into another kick up into a 12 or 13% and then it flattens out. You try and get a sprint effort in to get the, the speed high again. Vinton does seem to have the effort again here. 500 watts here coming from Vinton. And it uh, looks like he's going to be taking down the W4 the race out here today we'll see if uh they do give it to him there for zwiftpower.com or if they uh, you know the admins on the day will uh be uh on board with the effort there or not but it is going to be dart here now 6.2 watts per kilogram now going to be taken down seconds up into 189 beats per minute consistently here glad it's here 20 seconds back so leandro messanillo here team draft representing and uh was a solid battle between him and Vinton all the way to the top here but it looks like Vinton was able to take down the get the better of excuse me of the dart and uh but team draft will be taking down second place and uh it looks like Gladich here 
uh, going to be jumping in for third. Hug there, a little ways back, representing Switzerland, it looks like. 6.2 watts per ton, 186 beats per minute, and uh, is going to be the rider for fourth place. If we had a podium out to fifth place, he'd be holding down a solid uh, result there as well. Actually, it says fifth. It swapped up to fifth place momentarily there. Interesting to see uh, as it does swap around a little bit. Hughes Bell there as well now sitting in. It looks like sixth place, but it's going to be Hug now. 7.7 .7 watts per kilogram going to come from him. One last kick to the top. Messi Neal already across the line, then Gladich, and then it will be Hug. Merritt a little ways back with Hughesball, and then C Beck. Now it looks like the battle between Hughesball, Beck, and Merritt. Uh, Beck was the instigator a few turns back, but it looks like Hughesball was the next one that, to go on the attack. The Danish rider from Fusion ECT, eSports cycling team, up in the 5.9 watts per kilogram, trying to hold on to the sixth plate. Does have a one second gap, but Merritt looks to be closing it down. This is a solid effort here for Merritt. And Merritt coming out of the UK might be able to close this down. We might actually see a sprint to the line here between the two riders. Not sure it's going to be able to happen, but an arrow power up from Hughesball. Fusion eSports cycling team knowing when to pop that power up. That's a 30 second power up for the. Uh, for the arrow power up, that's the strongest one out on course. Not going to be happening. Whoa, 220 RPMs there. A little bit of mistake there from the smart trader, perhaps. But Merritt now across the line, seventh place. Back, not able to hang on. Solid effort, though, coming from the mountain biker out of the U.S. A couple of Belgian riders a little ways behind. Apers, it looks like you're going to be holding down for a top 10. Huge result for him. Lightning Vujas in there. Eight watts per kilogram trying to close it down to his fellow countrymen. Will he be able to do so? 4.6 watts per kilogram. Lionel still trying to close it down. Down, but I think it's just not enough landscape, landscape to bring it back. Six seconds is going to remain the difference, I believe, as Apers cruises across the line. Vujasin, 4.3 to come across the line. And then it's going to be Alex West for Team HDR Zwift Academy finalist uh, that did, uh, you know, did make his way into that top three for the Zwift Academy this year amongst the men it was over uh, in South Africa, actually, with the uh, Team Dimension Data, actually. So good to see him come across the line in 11th place. All right, back to the GCN riders, Emma Parada Saddle, as well as May, killing it today. Uh, it looks like Emma's super focused still, trying to bring back those places. Let's give her some ride-ons and some encouragement, as I believe she is still trying to fight for that top 100. Let's see if we can get some of the places that uh, that she has out on course. Some water being handed off there. They're probably plenty through plenty of water out there uh, in the room there. Things are probably really heating up there. Currently sitting at 115th place. So she's brought back about 10 places since the last time we've looked. Can she continue to hunt down those riders ahead? She's leading out actually the group that she's been with. Bringing back Saldo there it looks like there for TD1D uh, actually coming out of Norway. So see if she can bring back that rider. I'm going to see if I can get her on my screen as well as we are looking at uh, one of the feeds here from Productions. Uh, Puli now, 4.2 watts per kilogram, almost back onto the wheel. There's a large pack just ahead of her there. They're about to turn on the turn four. Only about, I would say, five to ten minutes of racing left for her. Can she bring this back? This is going to be an amazing time, actually, up over the top of the Alp de Zwift for her. I think that she's going to be definitely a sub one hour easily. And uh, 4.1 watts per current, 163 beats per minute. What can she do for these final turns now? And she does head into turn three. There will be some power-ups that she may be able to grab here momentarily, actually. And uh, large group ahead, about 20 riders, I think, in that group. It could be done. She's really got to start to dig deep, though. This is when she needs to start going into a little bit more over threshold effort. How much can I handle? Four or five minutes, four about ten minutes left in the race. Emma Pooley, time trial, you know, multi-time national champion, world champion in the time trial. If anybody can do it, I think Emma's going to be able to really start to put a consistent effort, measure it well. You know, we've, we've, we've had... Other top end time tra time trialists on the program here as well before with Kristen Armstrong, one of them chatting about, uh, you know, how to measure that and bury yourself enough to, to leave everything out on course. And I think that's what Emma's going to have to do right here is to measure it just well enough that she doesn't blow off and back, you know, blow up and back off, uh, have to back off at any point. Just that razor thin uh, place that you go into where 
you know, not full on nuclear, not full on blow up, but at the same time, put everything out there without losing all the waters that you, you know, that you need to hold to get across the line exactly where you can with the best effort that you can possibly throw down. That's what she's going to need to do now. You can see the grimaces on the face there coming from Emma. The focus is there now trying to bring that back for that top 100 place. I'm looking at a my screen about 90th here. Let me see if I can get back to Emma here. She is just about halfway through the uh, turn three now, about to hit that section where the ride-on is on the ground there. So there may be a power-up here for her in a moment. James Hodge is just ahead of her with Hootman as well. It is going to be Soldo that she's chasing down there here. It looks like 110th place for Soldo. Graham there in 111th. Osenbrick there in 113th, 112th. And then it is going to be Emma Pooley now 116th place, hanging out with B. Anderson from the Vikings team. Now, really giving her a wheel there. It looks like they're 164 beats per minute there coming from Emma. Now, Petit here just a little ways, a ways ahead of her. And now, actually, Emma overtaking her 4.8 watts per kilogram, 165 beats per minute here coming from Emma. Mike Schwartz just ahead of him, ahead of her. Uh, out of the USA. Awesome break there coming out of Germany, just a little ways up from there as well. Gravdell from Team Draft now looking to maybe give her a little bit of a draft actually and working together with Emma to get her into that top 100. Emma now on the attack, it looks like, up into 114th place, making her way through the riders, almost into 110. Plenty, you know, it looks like at least 10 riders ahead here to take down. She might be able to pull it off here amongst the riders. Quick little look at the results so far as I am seeing Sean Vinton for first place overall amongst the top end riders. Leandro Messonio, their second place. Both of them at 5.7 watts per kilogram for the duration of the race. Nick E. H. They're out of Switzerland. Ryan for Innovation as well, 5.6. Lars Hughesball there from Fusion ECT in fifth place. Simon Merritt, sixth. Chris Beck, seventh. Michael Apers and Lionel Vajasin, both out of Belgium, uh, rounding out top eight and ninth. Alex West for tenth place. Pascal Weirdhold. Uh, we're to wider hold, excuse me, for 11th, and then Jarno Vader for 12th. Sam Lindsay in 13th, and Nathan Killam uh, 14th, and then 15th will be Alan MacLeo. That's your top 15 so far on the day. Amongst the women out there, I believe Emma is currently in, uh, I believe, second place, actually. As you see in Louise Hubach. It looks like from uh, the innovation team, actually a little ways ahead, coming out of Denmark, riding for the innovation team. She does have a Zada badge, actually, on that Zwift uh, power profile, actually. So it does look like uh, Luis currently leading things out amongst the women. I believe that Emma then is going to be holding down a second, uh, a solid second place currently out on course amongst the women. So 114th place though overall though currently for Emma. We'll see if she can bring it back to the top 100 uh, here with this solid 4.8. Now jumping into, I think she's going to need though 5 watts per kilogram to the top to make this happen. The heart rate's starting to come out that 165 we talked about this in the last broadcast up the out the Zwift how important the decoupling of the heart rate is to watch it and how it goes with the current power so as you can see decoupling quick little explanation a little bit of a nerdy training term that you're hearing there but it's decoupling is all about your current wattage and your current heart rate that you start at for a, uh, an effort for, for a duration of time and if the heart rate starts to go up with that current wattage, with that same wattage. So at 220 watts, let's say Emma's currently doing 166 beats per minute. At the beginning of the climb at 220 watts, it was most likely lower than that. So the decoupling is the decoupling of the heart rate from the same power number. As you can see it now, the heart rate starts to go up more and more at the same wattage, you start to see that the body's efficiency is not as high as it was at the beginning of the race. You definitely see that the coupling starting to happen. How high can that heart rate go with the consistency of the wattage before that wattage has to come back down? For her heart rate to come down and the body to get that recovery that it needs to keep functioning essentially the body eventually has to say look i can't do this any longer i can only do this for so long at this effort i can't produce the energy that you're looking for and we are seeing up into that 168 169 beats per minute now now 170 for emma emma really starting to turn the screws on her body here really starting to ramp the effort up looking for those final places in the top 110 now 109th place 
Now that final effort here from Emma is starting to come out. She knows that the final turn is in front of her at this point. She knows that she has to make up these places now. She wants that top 100. There's riders up ahead that she can pick off. There's the rabbits up ahead of her. 172 This is most likely over threshold. We have seen right around that 160 to 165, mid 160s for which she can hold for the duration of the climb here. 5.1 watts per kilogram over her threshold, I would think for sure. Looking for a VO2 max efforts. Robert here now 4.5 watts per kilogram up and out of the saddle trying to hold off Emma or maybe give her a lead out. We'll have to see which one it is. Emma now up and out of the saddle focusing to try and bring this race back into a top 100. Now coming on by Rowan here momentarily actually looking for a wheel here. Getting that draft from her from this rider ahead. There is a little bit of a draft on the rider ahead of her. Even at this gradient it's not going to matter much but it does do a little bit to keep her up to speed here. Now a couple of riders up ahead as you can see on the final turn Rowett, and it's going to be Franken here now as well. 4.8 watts per kilogram. And Chowen there out of Canada with a arrow, dra arrow power up actually uh, right now. And 3.8 watts per kilogram. Looks like Chowen fading actually. Sullivan as well at about 5.2 watts per kilogram. Olsen here fading for race W. We have Bruno Vieira 3.9. So a few of these races up ahead definitely have uh, are fading up ahead with only about three watts per kilogram, but there's a huge gap to make up here with about 20 seconds. Not sure Emma's gonna be able to break it into that top 100. Maybe top 105 is within the reality of what she can handle. Does she have a power up? Is the other question. Sullivan about 5.6 watts per kilogram ahead. Emma here really starting to throw down. She knows it's the final turn here. She knows it's the final stretch here. A little bit of landscape left to work with here. We'll see if she can bring it back. There's the finish line. Emma's going to be coming up and over the top of that. Little bit of the crest. Little bit of the crest there. Here's the view from the top as riders do come, come across the line here. Emma looking for a solid result as she chases down Rowett, Sullivan, Olsen, uh, as well as Bruno Vieira. The concentration still there, the final little gradients on the kicker climb, as well as the smart trainer that she's on there kicking back at her with the gradient that's coming at her. Rowett now starting to walk away from her load. Chowen has been caught. We were talking how he had faded a little bit, the rider out of Canada. 106th place, Emma absolutely amazing result from her so far. I think she's taken out well over 100 riders, actually, since she started this climb. Chown now in the attack here. Will she be able to respond to this attack from Chown? Pooley at, at 5.1 watts per kilogram. Chown now on, down to, it looks like, 5 watts per kilogram. Now 4 watts per kilogram. Chown all over the place, actually, out of Canada. Now 3.4, fading a little bit. Will Pooley be able to close this down? It is going to be DePaul here out of Belgium now, closing it down to her as well and it's gonna be a sprint to the line it looks like here for emma uh and keeping it consistent can she find the wheels here it looks like a little bit of fade 170 beats per minute really suffering it looks like to hold on to that power she's gonna have to sprint with these boys to the line 5.5 watts per kilogram she comes over the crest here 5.7 watts per kilogram hold on to the wheel to paw what's gonna happen here between emma and the rest she has to pause wheel will she have a sprint 5.5 watts watts per kilogram but it looks like it's just gonna be a solid tt effort no sprints the boys are going to get a little bit of the better of her across the line. But she was able to take out Frank Franken as well as McCormick. Solid effort there for Emma Pooley. Cross line looks like 109th place, I believe, in second overall for the women. What an effort there. Look at the face. They're calming down and getting some reprieve after one of the hardest efforts you could possibly put out out on Zwift. Uh, total time I'm seeing here of about a 106, and it was a 20, or almost a 20 minute lead in, which means that she threw down I think a sub 50, at least a sub 50 on the day. So that is a crazy effort actually uh, coming from Emma Pooley out there. Maybe a little bit over 50, not sure the exact time. We'll have to wait and see uh, what the time it was up and over the top of the up the Zwift for uh, the, K the KOM out there, but a uh, second place amongst the women is Luis Hubach did take down first, it looks like, for innovation amongst the women, and Emma was able to take down second place, it looks like, on the day. Uh, looking through for the re the results amongst the riders here, we I'm seeing actually Craig Taylor out on course. Zwift, uh, it looks like Zwift employee out there killing it. Good to see him. 3.7 watts per kilogram. About to cross the line here in 128th place. Cunningham as well. Uh, a little ways up from them. James Hodges from the KISS Racing Team. But we do have May Noriega here now. 3.7 watts per kilogram. Going into turn three as you can see. Battling it out for 330th place. Solid result for her. This is about where she started on the climb. Maybe went a little bit over effort there. And uh, went in the red a little bit. And had to back off it looks like just a little bit. Now it's going to be all about 
consistency to hold on to this place as she does battle it out with M. Divine as well as Jay Vinton out of Denmark. We'll see if I can find her out on course here as I do make my way on my Zwift here through the riders back to turn three. Uh, Noriega here now solid RPMs. There are 66 RPMs. As you can see, she's up and out of the saddle there. Definitely uh, feeling the grind of the current gradient uh, as she makes her way through the peloton here. Through three hundred thirty-one place, she does lose a does lose a place there. As we got power going on by there out of Germany with a quite an interesting with the interesting name Jay Vinton there as well as Magda actually out of Poland. It'll be interesting to see uh, what place that uh, may is currently sitting in amongst the women as well. We'll see if we can see that uh, for, for the results here in just a moment uh, from zipower.com. But going well, with uh, Emma Pooley over at the uh, GCN uh, racing headquarters right now. Emma, that was quite the effort out there. Uh, what did you What did you think of the race there and how's the cool down going? Um, the cool down is, is, is a lot more enjoyable than the race. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely effort. I, I, yeah, I'd give myself 10 out of 10 for effort. Uh, probably about 1.7 out of 10 for actually riding well. But I, <laughs> I um, yeah, it's funny. I actually, I think it's almost harder to ride it on Zwift than in real life. Because I think, as you said to me beforehand, um, you don't get to, you don't get to cruise in, in a draft. Um, whereas if I were racing, I'd get on a wheel and do as little work as possible. You never really get a break. Uh, even when you're on the wheel. And, uh, yeah, I definitely felt like I was um, cycling like a runner. <laughs> yeah, we saw you up and out of the saddle a lot. I thought that I did mention that during the broadcast that maybe with all the running recently that the uh, cadence and the way that it might felt comfortable would, would have been out, out of the saddle a little bit more. But uh, it looked like a solid yeah. effort out there. I, mean, I did see up front the the uh, drop off from the main group and you were putting out a solid five plus watts per kilogram for like the first five to ten minutes of the race trying to hang on to that front group it looked like yeah yeah they were definitely not averaging they weren't averaging the the, the four and a half to five watts i was expecting but that's the, that's the thing about racing is it's not about your ftp it's about the, the you know the peaks you can reach and how you can recover when you're doing just below your threshold so i mean I, i'm not i wasn't expecting to race particularly well um I think that the cadence thing's funny. I didn't feel like I could get a comfortable gear. Maybe um, I needed to, to check which gears I was using. <laughs> sounds nuts on the, on the static trainer, but definitely um, I'm more comfortable spinning it at about you know, like 90 to 100. And, um, but I also really like riding out the saddle, so um, that was fine. And I think I've also recently I've been riding a lot on, um, on oval rings, on Q-rings. So, um, and then on this bike, I'm, I'm using round rings. And the, I, I can really feel the difference like in terms of kind of smoothness of pedaling. And you do adapt back, you adapt both ways, but um, that, that's another lame excuse I'm going to pull out of my pocket right now. <laughs> that, uh, I haven't adapted back to round rings. You know, my legs are so sensitive to these things. <laughs> uh, two, two things I, um, for sure. The viewers are giving you a huge amount of like ride-ons and well done everyone, great watch. Uh, well done Emma, I'm seeing here. I think Emma's listening to you, so I'm seeing that Emma's doing a great job there. Uh, Canyon Emma, go! I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> lot of viewers who are really, really cheering you on there, as well as May well, there as well, so amazing, much. amazing job. What I that did was, see, was really Emma, nice. that was also amazing was um, the place that you started in after getting dropped off from the initial group and i think you took down like 150 riders or something like that from the start of the from the start to, to the top there i mean you really whittled away what was what you know what was your watts per kilogram or heart rate that you were targeting because it looked like it went to like the um, mid 160s then down to 150 and then you really decoupled yeah. into that like 170 range toward the end yeah i am um, I, I yeah I, I if i was comparing it to if i was maybe a bit fresher and not not been running recently i think i'd normally if i was going really flat full gas i'd get to 175 beats per minute and um i should be able to hold a solid five watts per kilo for for a good 10 minutes but you know it does it does depend a lot on how you're feeling and um yeah who knows who knows uh but i have to say that i really enjoy all the, all the little comments that pop up every time i was sort of despairing because i'd run out of gears and, <laughs> I'd, uh, someone would would write something funny in the in this sort of group chat like 
I hate cycling or something. <laughs> it made me laugh. And, and, and I have to say the graphics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I will say now that I've never been a fan of, of indoor training unless, you know, it was really horrible weather and I had to because it's just so boring. But with the graphics, it's, you know, it, it's absolutely beautiful. I love riding in the Alps and it's, it's about as close as you can get without just being there. Look, I, I love, even look, I can see now there's a cloud inversion. And um, that's one of my favorite things to see out riding because you get out of the fog and then you're up in the sunshine above the cloud and it's just beautiful. I can, I can believe you guys had programmed a cloud inversion. I thought that was pretty awesome. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really great. And I would, I would think some of the riders around you are somewhat motivating too. I mean, the whole cycling made social and competitive. So, I mean, coming into the race, yeah. you were like, I could tell you were in competitive mode. You were ready to go. I mean, did that help, us, well, help it as well? Um, let me tell you a little bit about my day. I've spent nine hours traveling today and I had a lot of anger pent up with the British train system, which I thought I would take out on the race. <laughs> so um, that, that was all aimed at Great Western Rail. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah no, I'm competitive. I think, you know, it, it's a good thing if you want to train hard. And um, I, I think um, after this experience, I should, I should do more Zwift races. Yeah, that was hard, <laughs> which is good if you want to train hard. Well, we'll be excited. Actually, I don't know if you know. Uh, we'll be excited to see out there for sure. Um, you, we do have you, uh, we do have a women's focus usually on Tuesdays too. If you want to jump in, I've uh, we've had uh, Beck uh, Wyzek showing up a lot as well. Oh, so cool. you have some competition, oh, cool. I think, out there. If you want to yeah. jump into the women's focus <laughs> race on ZCL every week, that'd be pretty cool to have. That'd you. be cool. Did you? Could you see my handlebars? I don't know. Um, I. I kept turning right. I don't know what was what was up, but basically by the end of the race, my handlebars were off at about 30 degrees to the right. And I think it's because I really wanted to ride off that cliff because I was suffering so badly. You know, the, there's a big snowy cliff. It just looked like you could just ride straight off the edge and then sort of bomb down into the nice cool snow. And uh, <laughs> I did hear a little bit of uh, chatter when I was at Zwift HQ last time that there might have been a way to get to the bottom with a parachute or something that didn't get written into the programming. Maybe you were looking oh, right. for that turn off there. But, there's a uh, hack somewhere, <laughs> paragliding or something. But I, uh, I have the same thing sometimes too. I tend to lean to my, I think it's my left when I'm suffering. My head cocks yep. to the left a little bit when I'm suffering. And my then my handlebars go that way as well. Yeah. My very first race, all the photos are of me like this. And I didn't know I was doing it. And I was so mortified when I saw that I sort of spent ages practicing keeping my head straight. But now it seems I do it with my shoulders instead, which is not much better, really. <laughs> <laughs> we do have uh, anyway. May suffering to the top there. It looks yep. like they're, uh, you know, arriba, arriba, arriba. breathing pretty hard, most likely. Last little, last little kick to the top of the course. There are 3.6 watts per kilogram coming from May there, as you can see. Uh, and she is really putting an effort there. It looks like she's kind of riding solo. A couple of riders to chase down. Hopefully she can bring them back here and <laughs> she's catching, uh, she's get a solid result rider. down. Vaya, vaya, vaya. Arriba, arriba. Yeah, I mean, she, up, 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 up. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I absolutely love it. Uh, May's putting in a huge effort there. Currently 30, 38th, 338th place actually out on the day in the B category. I'm not sure what, uh, what place that she is amongst the riders, amongst the Bs, but uh, you guys had... You guys have, have uh, Emma, you've had 1,228 riders show up for this race today. I mean, that is, a, that is one of the largest races that we've, uh, we've had out on, on course here. Well, it's, I can it's see pretty amazing how many, how many riders show up. Well, I have to say, if I was in a bunch of 1,228, I would be absolutely, rude word, scared, because it'd be a really scary big bunch. But uh, there's no danger of crashing on Zwift, which is great. <laughs> Yeah, that is, yeah, it's, it's it is pretty. I mean, you can hang out with all these riders. No danger of crashing. No cold. It's probably pretty cold over there today. I would assume. Yeah, uh, normally you know, when, when you ride down the mountain, here. you ride down the mountain through the fog. That's when you get really cold hands. Woohoo! May just crossing the line now, as you can see, <laughs> dropping those watts per kilogram immediately down to zero watts. And it looks like uh, probably a couple of high spot. fives going on over there at the GCA spot, GCN uh, racing headquarters over there just now. And uh, we're going to be having May here in just a moment as she looks like took down about 338th place, I think, on the day amongst the 1,200 plus riders that have jumped into the race here. If you have any questions or comments for Emma or May, I can see the comments over at Facebook right now. So we might be able to bring those on in. I'm going to take a quick little look at the results. We do get uh, a mic hooked up for May here in just a moment. But it does look like we've had over almost 400 riders come across the line. Uh, amongst the women 
It looks like May was able to bring in it looked uh, right around a top ten, I believe, amongst the women. Laura Applebaum actually with a solid result, I think, with uh, I believe third place on the day and then it's going to be uh kristen falk for vision cycling with fifth leah brewer there with six it looks like uh and then across the line next it's going to be kate robinson followed up by nicola B B bivona and then it's going to be louise brewer and i believe may is the next one across the line so solid result there sylvie holmes might have gotten better of her from z sun but quite the battle between uh, all the women out there today. That's going to be about your top 10 to top 15. Lots of very familiar names, actually, uh, amongst the riders out there today. So back in with May, though, over at the GCN Racing Headquarters. May, what an effort. What do you think of the first time racing? I mean, to be thrown into a race on Zwift as your first time racing was probably quite the experience. Whoa, this is really hard. <laughs> it uh, shows you how fit you are, for sure. I felt so out of shape. It was really, really hard, but I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. So as far as, I mean, the motivation to keep going and the experience of the platform there, the social side of it, we talked to Emma a little bit about that. I mean... <laughs> Did the, the, the riders around you, as well as the graphics and the gradients, I mean, the whole experience to, to get to, I mean, it was a huge effort. It looked like it. But, I mean, obviously the gradient changes with the, the cool setup you got there, along with all the riders around you, pretty motivating? <laughs> oh, yeah. It really doesn't feel like you're indoors. It takes your mind away, and it, it, uh, it's hard, but it's easier than if you were in the trainer just by yourself. So, yeah, it's a really enjoyable experience. Yeah, super motivating, I would think. Uh, absolutely amazing job. You ended up, it looks like, somewhere around the top 10 amongst the women in 330th place. Uh, you know, it looked like up front, the you put in a huge effort and you've made up like 40 places. How was your race? Like, did you did you go a little bit over effort? From my from what I was watching, it looked like maybe a little too much up front and then had to back off and, 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 and then kind of find your rhythm. Is that kind of how things, things went or am I incorrect there? Yeah, yeah, the beginning, uh, the flutter part, I like better. And I usually, I'm good at um, uphills that are like 1K or 2K. But then I start feeling <laughs> my legs and the effort. So I always push as hard as I can for as long as I can. So yeah, it usually happens. I go quicker at the beginning and then I had to like settle down a little and just find my rhythm. Yeah, you definitely did find a rhythm. I did see you were really consistent, actually, uh, all the way through from about halfway point up, you know, right around that 3.5 3 plus. So great, great effort out there. We were able to hold off a few of the riders toward the end. Amazing result. Uh, everybody was cheering both of you on all the way to the finish line there. So, you know, you jumped on Zwift for the first time and did the hardest course that there is out on Zwift. I mean, it doesn't get any harder than the off the Zwift, and you did it with the kicker class. And, and, and a smart trainer so it's an amazing effort actually out there and uh you know amazing amazing result thank you i want to say you know great job to both of you and thank you so much to both of you for jumping out there and and racing with everybody out on zwift today it's our pleasure well thank you our thank pain you. but also our pleasure thanks <laughs> yeah we like suffering it's hard but then speak it for yourself really good oh you like it too i like it afterwards yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it great really really fun really enjoyed oh, it thank great. you very much for having us Sorry about the sweating. Yeah, cheers, you guys. Cheers, you guys. Thanks so much. You're all good. You're all, that's natural, right? All right. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much to our GCM presenters and their racing out there with us today. Uh, looks like we're going to wrap it up for today with the Race Up the Up, the Zwift GCN race number two in the series. Make sure to come in to show up, though, for next week. We got another race, next week, race number three in this GCN races. Let's go ahead and take a look at the course preview. And thanks a lot to all the viewers, and we'll see you next week, as always. Right on.